What's up YouTube, how it goes that I know what some of you are thinking, this son of a gun telling me Intel's dead, I'll tell him who's dead. Calm down, I put a question mark technically, so I didn't say Intel's dead, I said is Intel dead? All jokes aside guys, welcome to another video. Today we are seeing why Intel is in the state it is today, why Intel is struggling, why it's doing these rather silly desperate things, and what Intel's future is looking at, and of course, the most important question, is Intel going to survive all this? Well, in a nutshell, I'm gonna make a super simplified video. This is not a technical video. This is a very high level video to give you a quick summary of what's going on, how Intel got here, and what the future is looking like, not just for Intel, but the entire processor industry as a whole. First things first, we have to understand why Intel is in the miserable state it is in today. So we have to understand a couple of things. The most important thing to understand here is that Intel is a little bit more unique when it comes to processors than the rest of the industry. The reason for this is because Intel has complete control over their supply chain. So what I mean is that everything from designing the processor, to specifying it, to testing it, to actually manufacturing it in a factory and making sure it hits store shelves is handled by Intel for the most part. In contrast to this, companies like AMD, Nvidia, and even Apple often design their chips but the manufacturing process is usually outsourced and of course there's various benefits to this but the thing is that Intel's approach is a double-edged sword. So of course, one of the biggest benefits of owning your entire supply chain is that there are minimal overhead costs and also you don't pay a markup for manufacturing. So whereas other companies are obviously gonna pay a markup because obviously the outsourcing companies wanna make a profit off them, Intel has complete control over supply chain, so they're not paying extra costs and there's a bunch of money saved in that sense. And because Intel has been around for decades, they have a very well-established supply chain in North America, Europe, and in China, and in just Asia in general as well, which of course works to their benefit. However, one of the biggest disadvantages is that let's say Intel decides to introduce a new chip manufacturing process, they actually have to look at their own production capacity and take away from it to produce another type of chipset in correlation with an existing chipset. This is exactly what happened with 14 nanometer back when it was released in 2014. So while 14 nanometer processes were established and refined over time, when the time came for 10 nanometer processes, it actually meant that Intel would have to take away from its 14 nanometer production capacity and focus it towards 10 nanometer. This never materialized because A, the 14 nanometer architecture was a huge success and almost every PC manufacturer factor out there was using an Intel dominated computer, which meant that Intel had to use all its energy producing 14 nanometer chips. Now this doesn't justify what Intel did, but it puts a little bit more context why they were so late to adopt the 10 nanometer architecture or seven nanometer, which by the way, of course, at the time of this video still technically does not exist at a commercial level. Now, while Intel was scratching their heads onto how to best design their processors and manufacture them, Companies like AMD, for example, which technically had a much smaller scale of operations, spent most of their time on R&D and figuring out how they can develop more efficient processors that actually have performance equal to or greater than Intel. One of the ways they did this, of course, is by making smaller dies. This introduces the seven nanometer and more recently the five nanometer processors. And they did a pretty good job at making these dies, making them stable, work out. But concurrently while they were doing that, their outsourcing part partners such as TSMC, for example, was working on ways to manufacture these chips in the most effective way possible. And they were obviously talking back and forth to each other. And since both the manufacturing process as well as designing process was handled by two separate industries, aka companies, they could be done together without affecting one or the other too much. And this meant faster development, which eventually, of course, was able to supersede Intel because Intel was too comfortable to an extent making the 14 nanometer process but also struggling to kind of divide its resources effectively to make other types of process architectures. This, of course, beckons the question. Aside from making ridiculous advertisement, exactly what does Intel plan to do about this rather depressing situation? 
Well, the good news or semi-good news is that Intel has kind of laid out a roadmap or plan as to how they plan to come back to a more competitive position. In fact, if rumors are to be believed, we may be seeing Intel's 10 nanometer node for the first time in a commercial state as early as at the end of this year with Intel's 12th generation Elder Lake processors. Of course, what kind of performance yield we're gonna get remains subjective because no one knows since it's not out there. But one thing's for sure, keep in mind, at the 14 nanometer level, Intel was the best at its game. In fact, even now with 14 nanometer, Intel still has some amazing single thread performance, or sorry, correction, single core performance versus some of their rivals. So I have no doubt they're gonna try to squeeze every inch of performance they can from the 10 nanometer node, despite the fact that their competition is on seven, five, and in the not so distant future, potentially even three nanometer nodes. So again, they have some of the best engineers, some of the best scientists out there making their chips so they definitely have the potential to at least meet the same competitive performance we've seen around its rivals. Whether you're team blue or team red or more recently team black or whatever you want to call Apple's M-series chips, here's the thing guys, competition is almost always better than no competition. So the first thing is every time you say, I hope Intel dies, they deserve to go bankrupt, they deserve to fail, keep in mind, you're talking about the jobs of thousands and thousands and thousands of people who actually have very little say in the decisions the corporation makes as a whole. And not just that, also keep in mind that competition is a great thing. Because Intel was dominating the industry for such a long time, competitors like AMD wanted to gain that competitive advantage again. So they started doing better R&D, started making better products. And as you've seen in recent years, they've made some fantastic processors that have once again come to a competitive advantage. However, if Intel wasn't there, or let's say AMD wasn't there, Intel would have probably further used more time to create 14 nanometer plus 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 whatever. You get the point. What I'm trying to say is competition is healthy. It helps companies make better products and often this means better prices for the consumers and of course a better performance for you the consumer so don't get caught up in the emotional race of trying to beat down a company in fact kind of hope that that company does better because it's going to encourage your company of choice to do even more better and hence the cycle of competition i really hope i was kind of able to simplify what's going on right now what we can expect with companies like intel and fyi by the way I don't think Intel is going anywhere. They're a huge company. While they may not have their glory days anytime soon in the near future, I definitely do believe that they're going to sustain and they're going to be all right at the bare minimum. Keep in mind guys, I produce all kinds of tech content. I produce all kinds of quality reviews about products and of course make explainer videos like this. If you enjoy that kind of content, consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that like button so I get maximum exposure. It helps me grow and it means a ton to me. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Soul Tech, logging out.